shoveling a path for the puppies so they don't have to walk in the snow when they come out to go potty. Geography, we're going to start um, doing a little bit of a study on the continent of Africa. So each of you need to get a piece of paper. It'll be really easy to make sure you put your name on it. Okay, when you think about the word Africa, what five words come to mind? Write them down. There's no right or wrong answer, just whatever you think of when you think of Africa. So now we're going to do this little worksheet here about the size of Africa. Technically, um, the top one is the one that's more accurate. <coughs> Look at the size of Africa on the bottom one compared to the size of Africa on the top one. Yeah. Um, it, it implies, looking at the smaller one, or I mean the one where Africa is smaller, that it's implying that Africa is small. But if you look at the other one, it looks bigger in comparison to the other countries. Oh, But you do not have to write down answers, we're going to discuss the answers. So Kayla, can you please read the first question? What happens when we see maps of Africa that show it being very small? Well, what do you think? It could mis it could mispronounce it. Mispronounce it? I mean... Pronounce it is how you would say a word. Not show it properly. Okay. Do you have anything to add to that, Jenica? It would confuse. It would confuse other people on um, thinking of the smaller one. Yeah, sure. What do we think when we see maps that show the United States being just about as big as Africa, even though in reality Africa is much, much bigger? I think. That it's just as important as every other continent? Right, but the question is asking, when you see the United States on a map and Africa on the map, and they make it so they're the same size, or even that the United States might be larger on the map, but in reality, Africa is larger, what message is that sending? An incorrect one. And what is that message? smaller. Do you think that it might send the message that the United States is more important than Africa? Yes. Which is a false understanding because the United States is not more important than Africa. Okay, and Jenica, the final question. What do you think now that you see how big Africa is? I think it's important to learn about and uh, I think it wouldn't be all boring to learn about and I think it would be fun. Kayla? That makes it look more worth to look into. So I think it's safe to say that it's important that um, when people are making maps that they need to make them accurate to size, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything else they want to add about Africa? Mm. Nope? Okay. Well, that was geography for today.
site can contribute to the scientific method because looks are as important as, important as the other four sentences. senses. Many observations made by sight could have been the sea life and unique features about it. For example, it looked peaceful and abundant. Another example or observation was that it was very colorful and dark in the body. My sense of sight contributes to science because in order to observe something, you have to look at it. My sight gives on whether if something moves or not. My sight gives on my sight can observe how things live in their environment. Sight can also observe on how things eat or maybe drink or may drink liquids. It can all observe how things dance. You remember, this is unit three. Mm -hmm. Just the first column of words. Mm -hmm. What you people on the video don't see is that Kayla's all over the place and obnoxious until the camera moves to her. Then she sits up nice and straight and doesn't be as obnoxious. Who's going first? Enemy or opponent. Hi. He's eating a snack and then heading to work. Pippin, what are you doing? That is not what I thought liquidate meant. You must have thought that of the Wicked Witch of the West where she was liquidated or turned into liquid. Liquidate. It doesn't say what part of speech it is. Liquidate. Liquidate is a word meaning <laughs> settle the affairs of by the... Gardens? 
And no, this isn't on your face. I'm just going towards your writing. Set, go. I think you just dropped the mail. Go get it, quick! I thought you said you were just going to run really quick and that you didn't need a coat in this snow. Are you regretting that? So maybe next time your mom tells you to put on a coat, do you think maybe you'll do it? Pippin wants a bite from Garrett. Garrett See a little bite of egg right there. Mystery of the day is Pippin going to get the bite? Today is Garrett's 38th birthday. And this over here is the cake that Kayla made. Oh, you got a bite. And Jenica made. Jenica baked it and Kayla decorated it. And Kayla's doing schoolwork with this cake like right under her nose. That must be torture. No, it's not. There's a billball looking for a bite. Yeah. Oh, there's a Kayla and Jenica looking for a piece of cake. If you want, we can reread through that paragraph. Mm Forget that the camera is on. Ugh. Okay, this is a true or false question. The Father said that Jesus would be the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Is that true or false? True. Okay, the next one. True or false? The disciples did not receive the Holy Spirit before Pentecost. False. That's correct. When did they receive it? Before. Yeah. When? Yeah. The day of Jesus' resurrection. That is correct. Because it says in John 20, 22, the disciples had already received the Holy Spirit on the evening of Christ's resurrection when he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Okay, the next one. 
When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak with other tongues. True. Joel prophesied that God's Spirit would be poured out upon all flesh. True. Okay. And the last one, only the Jewish Christians received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. All. Okay, what would make that correct? All. All. Right, because it tells us about, um, I think it was Peter and John praying for the Samaritan believers to receive the Holy Spirit. And there was another spot where um, the Gentile believers were at the house of Cornelius. And they were listening to Peter preach, and the Holy Spirit fell upon them when they heard the word. And then, okay, I need your score. Um, three wrong, four wrong. Okay, so 33. 30. Next, you are going to need your phone or your tablet. talk about some of the religions in Africa. Ooh. We're going to talk about Hinduism, Christianity, and Islam, and Judaism. Those are the main religions in Africa. So what you guys are going to do is look up a, a short, fairly short, definition or explanation of each of those religions and just write it down in there. Yeah. No problem. We're having carrots for a snack today. Jenica already ate hers. Kayla's finishing up. Hi, Bilbo. You're a little close. Back off. They had they reserved the right to release this information if you ever get it again. Wait, Dad, do you get a free mail? What do you have there? Milkshakes. Oh, McDonald's has this new light up table. Can Bilbo have a look? Watch this. Okay, that's enough. Pippin! Can I give Bil Pippin? Bilbo, what's on your tongue? Pippin, you want a bite? Pencil is right no, no, there. Not, not those oh, the colored pencils. Okay, so I'm also doing a ocean 
spreading project. And so this is the first layer. And as we go on, the layers will get changed. So this is the fifth layer, the purple, and then the pink layer, That's the last and that one. is the model that the girls made to demonstrate the spreading of the ocean floor. So today we we are doing a demonstration of ocean uh, sea floor spreading, and in order to demonstrate that, we are going to use these strip this project that we made. So the yellow is the first layer. The first layer is the old layer and the orange layer is now the new layer. So when the ocean floor spreads we still have the old floor but we have the new floor. And then we have the new floor with the old floor still there and we're just going to keep spreading them <coughs> uh c4 thing going to we're going to keep spreading the c4 thing we have our new layer there but we still have our old one my face. Look at those pretty gold fingernails. Huh? Until we reach the last layer. And that's all. Thanks for watching. Um, the letter disappeared. You had zoomed in too far. That's weird. There's no sound. For their vocabulary words, if they get it wrong, the snowman melts. You should have the sound up. Oh, he's melting.
did she put her phone to the window and load it up? Today, our chapter is active verbs govern the objective case. And like I said, this is the second to the last chapter. Tomorrow we'll be done with it. And now, gentlemen, said Judge Grammer, when next they were assembled. But what is the matter, Dr. Verb? What is it? What is this about? He asked, interrupting himself from, for Dr. Verb had gone down on one knee before the judge and was holding out a paper to him. A petition of Petition your lordship, said Dr. Verb solemnly. I beg for justice. No proposition. It is of no use to try. Hold me back. And to whisper that his lordship will be very angry. You have had your rights given you, and I am going to claim mine. My lord, I beg for the right of an extra mark whenever any word of mine governs a noun or a pronoun in the objective case. At the words objective case, everyone in the courtroom held his breath, accepting the judge to, expecting the judge to burst into a rage. And certainly a sudden flush did overspread his face and rise to the very roots of his wig. For a moment, he sat silent with compressed lips. Then, lifting his head haughtily, he said, Do not apologize, Dr. Verb. I forgive you, but on one condition, that you show clearly and at once how to discover an objective case that is governed by a, by a verb. Certainly, my lord, said Dr. Verb joyfully. It is the easiest thing in the world. Just as you have to ask the question who or what before the verb, to find out the nominative case. So you must ask the question whom or what after the verb to find the objective case. For the no each chapter has a worksheet that goes with it, as the girls already know. Okay, well. I think you guys need your worksheets from yesterday. Mm -hmm. And you'll see on the side here, this, this is also part of it. Um, there's all the words for those sentences that they gave for the students of Schoolroom Shire. So if you look at it, it will say, we took a walk in the garden. Is that one? And so on. The other one, I see a bee in your bonnet. So those are the sentences. They're just like that. You understand that? So you need to write each word what part of speech it belongs to okay there's two pages oh, okay because there's eight sentences okay you understand what you have to do the stripes make me look flattering comment down below no! Oh, that was recording. What do you need, boo? In art, the girls are working on drawing the entire alphabet in black letters using vanishing points. They're doing super good with it. Better than I could ever do. I am not an art person at all. She's working so hard.
Kayla has a math test she's working on. How you doing, Kayla? Mm -hmm. Good. Memorized formulas. <laughs> so I'm so thirsty. I need a glass of water. Got my ice and my straw. How's your nice cup of water? Quote, quote. This is what my mom uses as her cup. <laughs> not true. Well, right now it is, but not typically. Anyway. Maybe. Or maybe your hair is just bigger than usual. Okay, so the assignment was to put on this graphic organizer ways in which Africa connects the rest of the world. So Kayla, what are your answers? Trade routes, routes, religion, wanted resources, and ancient kingdoms. So we talked about water pressure under the water today and what did you guys learn? Um, I learned that if you I learned that if you fish up a fish that came from a very deep um, pressure that its stomach can uh, like come out of its mouth because of the uh, inflation inside it, it pushes the stomach out and you uh, to solve the problem, you take it by its uh, lip and then slowly lower it back down into the water. Okay. Kayla, what did you learn today? I learned... You're really making yourself look like a fool. Okay, let me restart. Good idea. Okay. I learned <coughs> that you are scuba diving when you are sending back to the surface that because there's 14.1 pe uh, pounds per square inch in the water, that when you are ascending, you should take breaks at a certain level so that your the, nit the bubbles of nitrogen inside your body can be expelled or come out of you, no, um, can be released so that you don't get what's called the bends and 
And I also learned that it's the same for a fish that comes from deep underwater. You have to slowly send them back to their normal pressure so that um, their bodies will deflate. Are you done? No. And I'm done. This is our last time reading Grammarland. This is the last chapter. Jenica, will you please start? Oh. And who's to have the prize? The, the court was again assembled and the judge was just going to speak when he stopped for there with Mr. Nome, who had gulped, had plopped down on one knee before him, just as Dr. Herb did before, and was holding out his petition. Dear me, exclaimed, exclaimed the judge, you too, what can you have to complain of? I have lost a case, my lord, said Mr. Nome, still kneeling. Get up, sir, said the judge, and say out quickly what you mean. I never have done with, <coughs> am I never to have done with these tiresome cases? Please, my lord, it is just this, said Mr. Noun, standing up. You have seen how my words can be nominative case or objective case, but there is a case in which they are neither of these two. For instance, in the sentence, the monkey pulled the cat's tail, pulled is the verb. Monkey is the nominative for, for the monkey did the pulling. Tail is the objective for what did the monkey pull? The tail. But then what case is cat? It is not nominative nor objective. Don't ask me what case it is, said the judge indignantly. Say out at once yourself. But you will be angry at the long word, my lord, said Mr. Noun. Nonsense, sir, said the judge, getting very red. Speak at once when I order you to do so. Then cats is said to be in the possessive case, said Mr. Noun, because it shows who possessed the tail that was pulled by the monkey. No, my lord, said Mr. Noun, looking <coughs> a little confused. Oh! <coughs> oh. <coughs> because there is little preposition too before Harry and and prepositions. Prepositions govern the objective case, Aunt, said Dr. Sintek solemnly. Yes, yes, we know, said Mr. Noun impatiently. But I mean any noun that shows the possession without the help of any preposition, as if he said, this is Harry's knife. Harry is in the possessive case, for it shows who possesses the knife. Not by the help of any preposition, but by making it Harry's instead of Harry. I might have said in the other sentence, the monkey pulled the tail belonging to the cat, but it is much better to, and shorter to use the possessive case and say the monkey pulled the cat's tail. It certainly seems a convenient case, said the judge. It is, my lord, said Mr. Noun. And therefore, I think I have a right to ask for an extra mark for it. Oh, that is what you want, is it? Said the judge. Well, I grant your request, provided you can show me an easy way for finding the possessive case at once. You may always know it by the little apostrophe, either before or after an S at the end of the word, answered Mr. Noun, as Mary's doll, Tom's dog, the baby's milk, the children's toys, the boy's hats, the girls' gardens. Is that not easy, my lord? Yes, that, that is simple enough, replied the judge. Therefore, although I think it rather imper impertinent. impertinent of you to have brought so many cases before me, I will grant your request. You, have, you are to have an extra you are to have then an extra mark for every nominative case and for every possessive case. But none are 
but none for the objective case. And you will lose a mark every time you are governed by a proposition. Are you satisfied? Mr. Noun bow and took his seat. And now, gentlemen, continued the judge, addressing the nine part of speech. As you have all appeared before me and shown clearly who and what you are, oh, me, oh, oh, poor old me, cried introduction. I have not told you what before me, so judge Sunday, because we have all heard quite enough about you already. Once it's quite enough to have heard such an unruly, odd little creature as you are. And you have thrown yourself in more than once while the people are, sh while people are speaking. We all know that you neither govern nor as governed by anyone else and, and that you agree with nobody. Therefore, stand aside and be quiet. Oh, well, chuckled. Interjection as he obeyed. If I do not govern my anyone, at least I can take my neighbor's words as what other people can and make them my own. Mary, forsooth, indeed, that I can. Mary is mine, said, said Dr. Herb, bustling up. Indeed, indeed is mine, said Adverb, blandly. Pray, do not quarrel with him, said the judge. Let him have a few words to keep him quiet. There is one thing, said Dr. Verb, laughing. No one would be in a hurry to steal interjections words, for they are not worth it. Who could ever make a decent word out of O oh, or Fee? Fee or Peshaw or Ugh. Laugh as you like, Dr. Verb cried interjections, cried interjection. My words can stand alone and make sense all by themselves and mean as much as a whole string of other words. For instance, when I say fee, that is as good as saying you ought to be ashamed of yourself. And when I say, ah, that means I see though all your fine airs and grace, Dr. Verb and know all about you. Ha ha, what do you say to that? And interjection once more took a turn over head and heels. Keep him quiet, will you? Said the judge. And now gentlemen, he continued for the third time, I hope we shall be prepared for the great trial that is to take place this day week. This day week. The people of Schoolroom Shire are all invited to attend and to bring their slates and pencils with them. You all, my nine parts of speech, will together make up a story which Sergeant Parsing will have in his hand. He will then carefully examine every word and the children of Schoolroom Shire, who will have a place for each of you on their slates, will put down a mark to each one who deserves it. In the end, they will count up all the marks and the parts of speech who has, not, who has the most will get will get sorry <laughs> was way into it <laughs> i'll just finish the page you can read the next one just at this moment when everyone was listening most anxiously to hear what the prize was to be clouds of dust were observed arising from behind his lordship's throne in fact the critics tired of doing nothing had begun to turn out whole piles of moldering old books Murray's grammars, old dictionaries, and I know not what. And the venerable dust therefrom, getting into his lordship's eyes, nose and mouth, brought on such a violent fit of coughing and choking that it was impossible to get another word from him. He did not then, nor has he since, informed his loving subjects what the prize was to be. Therefore, it is left to the children of Schoolroomshire to decide. In examining the following story, they must be both judge and jury and decide not only which part of speech deserves the most marks, but also what is fitting, a fitting reward for the happy being who shall win the great prize of Grammarland. And Kayla, you can go ahead and read the Sergeant Parsons story for examination. 
The sad fate of our squirrel. Once when I was walking in the garden, I found a young squirrel on the ground at the foot of a tall tree. It had fallen from the nest. I took the soft little warm creature in my hand and placed it carefully into the house. There we fed it with warm milk and it quickly revived. I soon set up with its pretty it soon set up with its pretty curly tail over its head and then rubbed its nose with its paw. It seemed to look at, it seemed to look to me as if it knew me for a friend. When night came I made a soft bed for it beside me and I slept easily. Cozily. Cozily. Um I, I lost it. Um, just, just a second. Can I use your phone for a second, Jennifer? It went out of grammar. You're right in the morning. Okay. In the morning, I took it to my cousin. It wants breakfast, she said. I will warm some milk for it in the, in my doll saucepan. So she boiled some milk in the little green saucepan and we fed her pet. Ah, I cried. Is it ill? It is struggling as if it were in pain. We tried to warm it, and we gave it another spoonful of milk, but alas, the poor creature gave a pitiful moan, and we soon saw that it was dead. The green paint on the doll saucepan was poisonous, when we had killed our little squirrel while it was lying in our arms. Okay, that's an interesting story. An interesting story. Okay, so your worksheet should be on the back of the worksheet from yesterday. Go ahead and do that. Yes. should be self-explanatory. I'm sure what you have to do is read that story and mark down where, with each word, put a mark where that part of speech is. I don't like doing that. No. It right. highly annoys me. It should be quite simple. I know you just look at the first word and decide what it is. That's then you look at the second word and decide what it is and just keep going. Very time consuming. Rather tight. So we're making a turkey today because they were really cheap for Thanksgiving and the girls wanted to see the organs that were inside. I don't really know what everything is but I'm guessing this is the liver. Obviously this is the neck. Let's get a close-up on the neck. This is some kind of, this is the neck. This is some kind of nasty thingy. Looks like the gallbladder. The gallbladder. This is, I think, a, uh, something. The kidney. Ugh, gross. Mm. I don't know. And then let's see what's in the other bag. Looks like the same thing. We do not eat these, by the way. No, we'll throw these away. I know there are some people that use these. We do not. Maybe the lungs? Yeah, there's more stuff. Gross. However, this is quite a big bird over here. It's like... I can't even get it on the camera. It's just under 30 pounds. <laughs> so the four of us are going to be eating turkey for a long time. Okay. Let me hold my hand next to it. See how big it is. Bilbo. 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 Where's Bilbo? Oh, do you want me to rub your chest? You want me to rub your chest? You silly boy. Bilbo. What are you doing? Pippin. Hey, Bilbo. Pippin. Bilbo, you don't want me to pet Pippin? Oh, there's Pippin. 
Hey, Pippin. Pippin. Weeky, weeky. Okay, I'm all done, Bilbo. Hi, girls. Hi. Why are you guys up so early on a Saturday? It's still dark out. Look at that. Because we have a Christmas program to do. Because we have Christmas program practice. And after that... We are going to go to Grandma's house and babysit the boys for a few hours. I did not know about that. You do now. Kayla is obviously not very excited about that. I am. Because she just has that look on her face like, ugh. No, I'm excited. I like the boys. I love seeing the boys. And um, I saw in the news this morning that... George Bush passed away. Yeah. You know who George Bush George is, Kayla. W. Bush? No, not George W. Oh. Bush. Who's George Bush, Kayla? A man. Wasn't he a president? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He was 94. He was almost as old as Kayla. <laughs> times three. No, times five. No, um, that uh, would still make me seventy-five. Times ten. One hundred and fifty. No. <laughs> How Nine. about six? six? That would make him ninety. He was ninety-four. Okay, I'm going to make this into an algebra problem. Mm -mm. Yes. No. Okay, so President George W. Bush is six times, no, four more than six times Kayla's age. How old is George W. Bush? Or how old is Kayla? And how old is Kayla? Fifteen and ninety-four. And tell me how you solved that. Because I already knew the answer. Mom told me, and I know how old. Now you are. have to solve it. You have to say the answer. Seriously, you're picking up Judah? <laughs> Told ya. You lose. All of you. <laughs> Bob, I would Anakin, get, why don't you pick up Kayla? Kayla. <laughs> what? I can't lift Judah. Why? Kayla, lift me up. The only ones I can lift is Jasper and Jackson. I can lift Josiah if I wanted to. Jasper? They can't put I don't think. Hang it from those. Why are you off in the la la corner instead of helping? Take both hands. Mm. Because that's how you do in school. I need to go up. I need to go up. Stop. Kayla. Hi. Can you do that? You should be a flyer for a cheer team, Judah. Hi. We're kidding. Judah. Here. Yeah. More towards the top. Yeah. Not Nikki. No. No. Josiah. No. Oh, oh, I thought that was a dreidel. What a wonderful. Spot. You mean a dreidel? Spanish. No one can find me. Tell me, are you holding this whole thing down? Not my whole hey, thing. Hey, Drew. 
Timothy. You got one? Timothy! Never mind. Upsies, I want upsies. Stop. Another joy. Jasper. There goes another ornament. Hey, Kayla. The more it's all. Okay, never mind. This way. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Here's two. Okay, never mind. Never mind. This one is literally. Be sure to subscribe and comment down below. Thanks for watching our video. Be sure to hit the notifications bell so that you'll get our latest video when it comes out.